<laughs> well, howdy. Welcome back. This time, with microphone, hopefully. Yes, with microphone. I might still do scripted bits, but we'll see. So, today I have a few goals. One, metal tools, forge, smithy, the works. I need them. Two, I want a sferna. Three, I want a crossbow. That arguably comes before sferna, but oh well. And finally, I'd like to get a structure on the back of the guy here. But I don't want it to just be a basic. What I forgot to add on to the list here was the extremely useful sea scale armor. I might build forward, I might build underneath him too. We'll see. With some goals set for myself, I decided to start with Hanotis House since it would allow me to progress through the other goals much easier and give me a mobile base that can go anywhere on the map. While building on platforms can sometimes be limiting in shape, I was going to try making something a little more complex and interesting than the basic hut designs I've done in the past. Unfortunately, just as I was beginning, disaster struck. But... Please don't be an Andrew Sarkis if it's an... Yeah, well... That sucks. Can't really do anything about it, but... Well, unfortunate, losing the Peril wasn't very impactful to me as they're an expendable tame, and at the end of the day, I've still got a berry gather with the Hanotis. After the Para died, I quickly got back to work on the Hanotis house, and while some rearranging was required, in the end I found a design I liked with better detail than I'd achieved in the past. So Hey, that works. With the structure mostly finished, I decided to go for the metal tools I would need, and it would start with the refining forge and smithy. With the forge being fairly easy to make, I ventured into the waters to go find metal for the smithy, then promptly got stuck in a roof. That's an issue. Thankfully, before I made the smithy, I remembered about the coral work table and made it to save on metal for a short time. With the forge and work table on the Hanotis, I went over to a metal spot, and on the sunken world most of the metal is found in these rusty looking okay. rocks. So, I need They're quite easy to gather from and also quite common. With enough metal collected for a few ingots, I surfaced and started smelting so that I could make a metal pick for more efficient metal gathering. While I thought I was finished with base building at the time, I never truly was, and I returned to the beaches to make a metal hatchet so detailing on the base could continue. Most of the modifications I did was to allow for more flow in the design, like raising the height for more layers and adding pillars to the sides.
base hopefully complete, I went to my old thatch foundation, ruthlessly destroyed it, and placed a bed down. The notice was officially my home, and a bed makes it final. Now that I had a mobile house, I decided to go explore the tropics, just generally wandering until I spotted some fish. I would need their scales to make a very essential set of armor, so I shot them with some cross... With some crossbow? Some crossbow? Is there more than one crossbow that I have? Am I just carrying around 12 crossbows firing off arrows? I digress. I shot them with my crossbow and actually landed a few impressive shots. With the scales, I was able to create some pieces of the sea scale armor that I would complete later. There we go. Look at that. Sea scale. So, what sea scale? Sea scale just allows you to do a lot more underwater because it increases your swim speed and you can, yeah, regenerate stamina when not moving. Doesn't increase oxygen efficiency or anything like that, but it's really good. Because, oh, that's so much nicer. Already I can feel the difference. Eventually... I'll get to the yellow obelisk. The ancient homeland of all sunken world survivors. The Pacific coasts. With three of my goals complete, I got to work on the materials I needed for a Sferna and its saddle. To start, I surfaced and got That's some narcotics so crafting. Okay. After that, I did battle with the various peaceful creatures of the beach and oh. the absolute devil spawn that are Ichthyornis. All for their precious help. Hoo hoo! That was good. Was thing in the jigs was Saddle good. crafted, trank arrows done, it was time for Sferna taming. I went to the little inlet I'd tamed He Man in and started the search. Oh, that's much better. And we found Sferna. Level 8 and level 44. Let's check what's further in. Level 44, but that one right there is level 60 with pretty colors. That's not bad, especially for early game. I'd really consider that. Ah, yes, the Carcanos underneath. Slightly worrying, that's all. Well, that's a level 60 in a fairly enclosed space. I don't want to do this. <laughs> I believe before I had a Mater Piscus that I was on, and that's what I was using, but let's just go for it. I believe they are faster than me in the water, but I have legs. They don't. So. Please don't go into the very depths. Please stop going into the depths. If I die, um, he lands right here. With the Sferna down, I put some extra meat in it and then waited for it to tame. Compared to Hanotis, this was much easier since it mainly cons consisted of waiting and not drowning. The Sferna will be very useful in the future. They're great tames for a few reasons. They're reasonably fast, strong, and have good health, but the best thing about them is that they can gather a lot of metal. Which means that getting an early game Sferna makes it very easy to get metal and much rarer to have a shortage of it. Crap. 
alligator, I guess. Since I just called it an alligator shark. Look at you! We have our second tame. Huh. Odd when you stop sprinting. Tail goes crazy. If you stop all right, yeah. I think that's actually placed. And we have a proper base setup with a mobile base setup. Ah, you're getting the shot. I have a mobile base setup with some doors, a bedroom, a sferna. We have metal tools, a crossbow. And that's pretty good.